Today we're going to learn how to build a form inside a bootstrap website. And the reason we want to do this is to make sure that the forms become responsive when we do resize the browser, or if I were to view the website inside different devices. So we're going to continue building off the website we did in the previous episodes, meaning that we're going to go ahead and include a form at the bottom here, right underneath the table we created. Now, if you guys are new to this series and you're just jumping into this episode, you don't need to have what we have inside this website. So just go ahead and follow along and you should have no issues learning how to create forms inside Bootstrap. So what we want to do is we want to go inside our file. And I'm going to go ahead and go down to the bottom of our website and just start a completely new section, which right now we have a article here called index table, which was the table we created in the previous episode. I'm just going to go ahead and copy it and just paste it right underneath our table, like so. Then I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything we have inside the container, inside the div. And then what we end up having is a simple article tag that has a classes index, not table, but form. And again, the index dash form is not a bootstrap code. This is something we did in order to target any kind of styling inside this article tag. So in case we want to change some of the stuff that bootstrap does for us, we can actually target anything inside this tag by targeting this class here. So this is only for us to, to mess around with the bootstrap code. Then inside the article tag, I include a container. We could either call this one container fluid or just container. Then inside the container, we're going to go ahead and include a couple of columns because when we create the form, I would like to have it a certain width. So we're going to go ahead and use the columns inside bootstrap to get this effect. So inside the container, I'm going to go ahead and create a div box. And inside this div box, I'm going to give it a class. I'm going to call it row. And then inside this div, I'm going to go ahead and create another div. Now this div is going to have a class set to something similar to what we have up here, which is in this case, column SM2. Just going to go ahead and copy it. Now what this one does is that it allows for us to optimize for tablets meaning that when we do actually hit the tablet with, it should start shifting around the content inside the website. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in here. And I would like to say that, well, when I include this form, I would like to have it one third of the width of the browser. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, we have 12 columns inside Bootstrap going across. So 12 divided by three is going to be four. So instead of two, we're gonna say four. Then because we need to have three of these columns, I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in two more times. So now four plus four plus four is equal to 12. Then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and include the form inside the middle column. So I'm gonna go inside the middle one and just leave the other two empty because the only reason they're here is to divide up the spacing inside the width of the browser or inside the width of the container, not the browser. Inside the column, we're gonna go ahead and include a form, at least a form tag. Then inside the form tags, we can start including all the form elements that we want to include inside our form. Now, when it comes to bootstrap, it's important to know that when we use elements such as inputs, text areas, or select tags, we need to include a class to them in order to make them 100% width inside the container we're inside of. So if I were to go ahead and say we're inside this form, I'm gonna go ahead and start off by saying we have a div box that has a class and we're gonna set this class equal to form group. Now, the reason I include this div tag around some of my elements inside the form is because I want to make sure I have the right spacing in between my form elements. So if I were to say, well, I have a contact form and inside this contact form, I have a label that says, you need to write your full name or something. And then underneath the label, I want to include a input so you can actually write stuff in it. Now these two, because they belong together, I'm gonna to go ahead and include them inside this div box. So inside the div box, we're gonna say we have a label. Then inside the label, we're gonna go ahead and set a for attribute to make sure we do actually understand what this is actually for, which means that we're gonna go ahead and give it a value as name, just to give it something. Then inside the label, we're gonna go ahead and say full name, colon or something. Then underneath the label, we're gonna go ahead and create an input, like so. We're gonna set the type as text, and we're gonna go ahead and give it a name as name, just to give it something. Now, when it comes to this, like I mentioned, we need to give it a class. So right before the type, I'm gonna go ahead and say class, 
and we're going to set it equal to form dash control. And when we do this, the input becomes 100% of the container, which right now is the container we have up here or the column we have here. It becomes the full width of this container. So we need to make sure we have this if you want to have it the full width of whichever container is inside of. So we can go ahead and include a couple more of these form groups because we don't just want to have a place where the person can write it the full name. We also want to have a place where you can write in an email address. So we're going to go ahead and paste it down here. I'm going to change it to email. I'm also going to change the text in here to email. And then inside the input, I'm going to go ahead and say we have an email, like so. Again, do bear in mind that I do have the form control class inside the second input as well, because we need to have it 100%. If I were to go inside my browser now and refresh, you guys will notice that at the bottom, we do get a form that has full name and email outside the input tags. So right now we can actually see what we need to type inside these areas here. Now I can actually zoom in a bit for you guys so you can see. Now we want to have some spacing in here. And like I said, the reason I included the form text inside an article was so we can actually start styling these sections ourselves. So if I go back inside my style sheet, I can actually go ahead and go down to the bottom and say we have not an index table, but an index form, because that was the class you gave it inside our index page up here. Okay. So we go inside the style. So you want to say we have a width as hundred percent. Background color should be white. It could be if you wanted to. I can actually go ahead and change it to F3, 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 just to give it some kind of light gray color. We want to have a padding from top and bottom, which is fine. And now if we were to go ahead and refresh, you guys can see that now we get some spacing in here. So it actually looks a bit nicer. I'm going to go ahead and include a couple more things because we need to have some kind of, well, at least to demonstrate to you guys, we need to have some more elements than just inputs. If I were to go back inside my index.html file, go down underneath the form group we have in here, I'm just going to go ahead and paste another form group. And I'm going to go ahead and change the text from email to age or something. Let's go ahead and change that here, like so. And instead of having an input, I'm going to go ahead and say we have a select. Then inside the select, we can have a couple of options. So we say option one could be, I don't know, 10 plus. Then we can have a couple more options that has some other eight in here. We can just choose something. So let's say 20 plus or 40 plus, just so we have some kind of options in here. So what we can do now is in order to make this go all the way from the left to right, let's actually go and refresh the browser just to demonstrate. You guys will notice that the eight stops right here. Like we don't have it 100% width. So if I go back inside my bootstrap code, and say we have the select up here, I'm going to go ahead and give it a class set to form control, just like we did inside the input. If I were to refresh the browser now, you guys will notice that now we get 100% width, which is a lot nicer looking in my mind. So why not have this instead? So we can do this with text areas as well. And just to give it a really quick text area, just to show you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste. And we're going to change this from message, message, like so. And I'm going to go ahead and give this one a text area. Like so paste it down. Well, we don't actually need to paste it down. Give it a class set to form dash control, like so. If we were to refresh the browser, now you guys can see that now we also have a text area. Again, we also need to actually give these a name attribute because when we do actually pass this on to some kind of hand loop, we need to get the values. But just to get the styling from bootstrap, this is how we need to do it. So now that we have this, let's talk about buttons because a button inside bootstrap is slightly different than just a regular HTML button. If I were to give this some kind of styling right now, I have a regular button here. I can actually go ahead and say submit inside the button. If I were to go inside the button tag and include a class and then set the class to BTN, which gives us the standard styling for a button space. And then I need to tell it what kind of styling specifically I want for this button. Do I want to have some kind of warning button? Do I want to have a default button or what kind of styling do I want to give this button? 
So if we were to go inside this button tag and say, well, let's actually go ahead and say we have only this button tag because I just want to show you guys how it looks like as a default. If I were to refresh, you guys can see we get this bootstrap looking button down here. If I were to go back inside my code and say, well, we want to include a different styling, I can go ahead and say we have a btn dash default. If I were to refresh the browser, now you guys will notice that this button down here changes into something else. Now we get a hover effect when we do actually hover on top of the button. Now in my mind, this actually looks nicer, but just to show you guys, we have a bunch of these. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste this a couple of times. About that many times. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change the second one to primary. Let's actually go ahead and write that inside the button so you guys can see which ones does what. The third one is going to have a success styling. Paste that in here. The fourth one is going to have a info styling. Again, paste it in. The fifth one is going to have a warning. And again, paste it in. Let's actually go ahead and copy that a couple more times because we do need to have at least one more. Then we're going to go ahead and say danger. And then the last one is going to be link. So now if I were to go inside my browser just to show you guys the different buttons we have, you guys can see we get a bunch of different stylings. The last one here is the link, which is why it looks like a link. And then we get all these cool looking buttons in here that has different colors and different, you know, hover colors when we hover on top of them. And it just looks so much better when we do it to boost that way rather than having to restyle it ourselves inside our own style sheet. So if we want to have a quick button, we can just go ahead and use the, the bootstrap styling. So now that I showed you guys the colors inside the buttons, let's actually go ahead and talk about the sizes of the button. If I were to go back inside my code and just say we want to remove some of these buttons here, let's actually keep the primary one because it has a nice color, like so. And let's say I want to include a different size. I can go inside the class and I can go ahead and say, well, what if I want the button dash to be large? I can say LG. If I refresh the browser, you guys can see that now we get a big button inside our form. If it were to instead say small by saying XS, refresh the browser, you guys can see we get a much smaller button. And again, you can recognize that this LG, MD, SM, and XS is the same we use inside the column names when we want to decide how big the column should be. So if I go back inside my column up here, you guys can see we have SM, which stands for small. So when we do actually get inside tablets, it's gonna have a certain styling. It's kind of the same way when it comes to the button sizes. So it's the same ones we use inside the button dash and then the size. I'm just gonna go ahead and say SM because I like that one better. Now, if I go back inside my browser and just refresh so you guys can see the proper size of it, like so. If I were to say, well, we want the button to be the exact same way as these inputs up here by having 100% width, we can go ahead and do that as well. If I go back inside my styling here and say, well, we also have a class called button block, like so, go back inside my browser, refresh, you guys can see that now we get a full width button, which is something that looks a lot nicer in some cases. So we can also go ahead and do that when we want to match the button with our inputs up here. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about when it comes to buttons is that sometimes we don't want a button to be activated. So in case right now, I were to go inside my website, say, well, I need to write some kind of email to use some 20 plus, write some kind of message, and then I can actually go ahead and click the button. But what if I want to disable the button until some specific requirement has been met? Well, we can actually go ahead and add a class that disables the button until some kind of requirement has been met. And again, if you ask me about how do we actually switch from an activated button and a disabled button, you're gonna to have to do it using JavaScript or PHP. So we're not gonna to get too much into that in this episode, but just to show you guys how to disable a button, let's go back inside the code, go inside the class and write active, which is the styling we use to activate a button if we were to refresh. So you guys can see that now we get this constant effect that looks like we have actually clicked the button inside the browser. If I want to disable the button instead of active, we can write disabled, like so. If we go inside the browser, you guys will notice that we not only get this 
graded out picture or graded out button, but we also get a different cursor when we hover on top of it. So right now you can see we can actually click it. Well, we could click it, but we get this effect that looks like we can't click it. Again, if you want to deactivate the button completely, you're gonna to have to do it using JavaScript or PHP. But we do get the styling that makes it look like you can actually click it. So the user actually knows, whoops, I can't click the button. Now, before we end off the episode, I just want to show you guys the responsiveness of this form we just created. If I were to go inside my browser and just resize it a little bit, like so, scroll down to the bottom, you guys can see that we get this flexible form that allows for us to resize the browser and then it shifts into you know whichever size we're watching it inside of. So if we were to watch it inside a cell phone, this is how it actually looked like, which is quite nice. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.